All right, so I'm showing about 10.02 here, so we're going to get things underway. So uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, here today uh, for today's webinar on automating abuse inbox management, Sparta Phishing Incident Response. Um, hello, I'm uh, Jan. I'm with Slashnext and head up the uh, marketing and strategy group here and uh, joined today by John Hall from Threat Connect. John, you there? I am. Yeah, I am a technology partner solutions engineer uh, working with folks like Slashnext to create integrations with the Threat Connect platform. Okay. Excellent. And uh, today, I mean, I realize a lot of you uh, joining uh, today or, or viewing this on demand are current Threat Connect um, users. So uh, we are going to have just a, a short intro here and then dive right into uh, automating this process. So, you know, first question is just, you know, around automation itself for, for the abuse inbox. So, you know, many organizations are, are taking the phishing threat very seriously and they are, you know, providing uh, cyber awareness and phishing training and sometimes even like single click reporting in an email uh, client so that when, uh, when a user spots a suspicious email, they can just click a link and it will get forwarded to an abuse inbox and then hand it over to the SOC or the IR team. Um, it's a it's a growing problem. Fishing is huge, and as and as people get more education, get more training, uh, they are reporting uh, more of these emails. We have customers get dozens to hundreds to you know, three to four thousand of these types of suspicious emails reported a day. A big challenge for folks is that a lot of these are false positives. Anywhere from sixty to eighty, ninety percent could be just garden variety spam or a legit email. Um, but you know, as people get encouraged to report them, they're they're a little more suspicious. And you know, investigating each of these incidents can be very time consuming. Research shows it can take anywhere from you know, three, five, and most people can take up to eight minutes you know, per incident in terms of researching what's going on with this email, you know, checking uh, things in the background, looking at the IOCs, et cetera. So it's an area that's very much ripe for automation, first to dispense with all the false positives quickly and then get to the real th threats faster. So when you can automate this process around, you know, particularly around the URL checking, um, for those emails, you can save a lot of time and, and speed up the whole incident response process. So real quick on the URL analysis that we're going to be showing today uh, with the Threat Connect uh, playbook is uh, this is a little different than just URL scanning. Um, a lot of times you guys are familiar with URL scanning. You can check it you know, against VirusTotal or some other kind of uh, you know, community database to go, okay, is this a known threat? Problem is the, the better phishing attacks are more on the spear phishing side or they've already been constructed in such a way to get through your, your email gateway and DMARC and other compliance solutions to actually reach a user and now they finally reported it. So with URL analysis with Slashnext, we're actually, when the URL is passed up from the Threat Connect playbook up to the system, it's actually firing off a browser up in the cloud and dynamically inspecting the page contents. So imagine this thing's actually using computer vision together with natural language processing and lexical analysis to understand what's going on. It's using OCR to lift the text out of images, which is a common uh, phishing tactic to kind of evade other security controls. Uh, if there are forms present on the page, we can provide enter dummy credentials and actually really interact with the site. So it's imagine like a threat research team just kind of pounding on the page there. And then all those clues, which of which there's hundreds, which are extracted from that page, um, or fed to machine learning algorithms, which then generate a definitive binary verdict. It's either going to be malicious or benign. There's no intermediate threat score or anything like that. And again, it's not just checking a threat database. It's actually looking at the site live so that it overcomes all the normal evasion tactics, like with all the URL redirects and things like that. And it doesn't even care necessarily if it's what the domain reputation is, because it's looking at the page. And as you know, a lot of the uh, threat actors these days are, you know, hosting their web pages on legitimate domains, compromised websites, or legitimate hosting services. So the normal domain reputation methods just aren't uh, up to it anymore. And uh, the accuracy produces an answer, you know, malicious or benign with near zero false positives, and the analysis provides a lot of forensics data in terms of a screenshot, uh, HTML, text, etc., to inform the reporting and analysis. So without further ado, we'll, we'll point and show how this actually can uh, be accessed with the uh, playbooks. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, so this is John. Uh, I'm going to go over this workflow that we have here just to kind of describe at a high level what it is we're looking to accomplish by what we're showing you today. 
So in this instance, we're taking a situation where we have a user that has uh, identified a suspicious email, and they're sending that over to an abuse inbox. And this abuse inbox is associated with our Threat Connect playbook. When we execute that playbook, uh, we're going to go out and access information through our integration with Slash Next to gather uh, forensics information about each URL that's found in that email that's sent and provide that verdict around each one of those um, to determine what, what's actually going on with that URL and whether or not there is cause for concern. Also, something we could do uh, with this playbook uh, is extend it um, into the future uh, by taking automated action based on what's available your, in your environment. And some, some examples of doing that would be URL blacklisting, for instance. Uh, jumping a little bit more specifically into the playbook that we're going to show, um, these are the high level, kind of the happy path steps that we have in the playbook. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to extract each one of the URLs from the email that we receive. We're going to deduplicate those uh, URLs so that we're only scanning each one once. Uh, we're going to check our whitelist or our global exception list within the Threat Connect platform for each one of those URLs. Uh, we don't really have a need to look at them if uh, they are something that we've already whitelisted or made as part of that exception list. Uh, then we're going to do our URL analysis using uh, the Slash Next app um, within the Threat Connect platform. Should we have those malicious results, uh, we're going to store the indicators, each one of those URLs, and we're going to generate a report. It's an HTML-based report, and we'll get a look at that after we go through the playbook. Once we've done that, we're going to notify the Threat Connect users uh, within the Threat Connect platform, those that are uh, supposed to take a look at this information and take whatever further steps have been defined. And then we'll send an automatic thank you email um, to the user that submitted this information to let them know uh, we appreciate them participating in this process. So let's take a look at the playbook um, a little bit more uh, in depth beyond just the slides that we have here. So to start out with here, we're taking a look at, at our playbooks view inside the Threat Connect platform. The purpose of this playbook is to provide you with a starting point for automatically processing those malicious emails. Um, today, we're gonna focus on the body of the email message. Um, so that's primarily what we're grabbing out here. Uh, although we do have the capability for you to process attachments, um, that would require some additional logic in the playbook. Our playbook is split up into uh, multiple parts. Um, and so we'll go over each one of these parts. Uh, primarily, we're looking at this right here is where we're receiving our information initially and kind of grabbing our URLs out and filtering those. Then we're going to talk about this iterator section here. This is the logic that we follow, uh, follow through for each one of the URLs. And that's how we complete the analysis. And then when we're done, uh, we have our follow-up action here where we're actually generating reports um, and taking our post actions to make those notifications. We'll go into a bit more detail on those um, in just a moment. A little bit of housekeeping just uh, to make sure everybody's on the same page with regards to the playbooks in the Threat Connect platform. This little green box that we have here is our trigger. Uh, it's named such. This is our mailbox trigger. Um, so we have a mailbox associated with this playbook and that's actually how we initiate this workflow. Each time an email is sent in, um, that would end up kicking off this workflow. The blue boxes that we have here are the apps, and that's primarily the logic that's uh, being executed in this playbook to perform all the different functions that we have, manipulating data, uh, extracting data, and also making our calls out to Slash Next um, to gather our analysis. The blue lines that we have here on the playbook canvas are our success paths, as determined by each one of the apps. As we have a successful pass, we're moving data from one block to another. Um, we also have these orange lines here, and these orange lines represent a failure path or an unsuccessful condition. And so that's determined by the app or the block that we're attached to as to what that unsuccessful condition is, and we'll kind of focus on those as we hit each one of them. Starting out here um, at the very top where we have our trigger, we're just going to walk through each one of these blocks and talk about things at a very high level. Uh, we do plan to distribute this playbook very shortly after this call. So I'm not gonna go down into the weeds of the specifics in each one of these blocks. Uh, you're welcome to retrieve that playbook and you can take a look at specifically what we're doing um, once we distribute that. We start out in the playbook here with the mailbox trigger. This is what's actually kicking everything off. And the first thing that we're gonna do is extract those URLs. We're using a regular expression to do that. Um, once we have that list of URLs, we're then deduplicating those so that we only have one copy. Uh, an instance where we might have duplicate URLs show up is if we have an HTML email, 
Um, and that HTML email actually has the display text as the URL, and then also has the HTML tag that contains the URL. We'll get two copies of those, and there's really no need for us to scan that twice. Uh, we're setting a little runtime stamp here. Um, that's a unique value that we can use for this given run of the playbook, and we'll do some association with the information um, inside the playbook using that value. So that's a temporary value that we create. At this point in the process, we have our list of deduplicated URLs, and we're ready to toss them into this iterator. And so each one of these is going to go in as a list, and for every one of the URLs that appears in that list, we're going to execute this logic down here. The first stop that we have, uh, once we drop down into this iterator, is to create a new indicator. Uh, might not be what you would think is the first step here, but the reason why we do that um, is we already know that this is a, a valid URL. Um, our regex is what helped us to know that and we extracted it, um, but we do have the capability in the Threat Connect platform to create an exclusion list. Um, and so when we attempt to create an indicator and we have a failure, uh, one good reason for that is that it, it may be on that exclusion list and doesn't belong in the platform. So if that's the case, uh, for that reason or any other reason that we can't create that indicator, we don't need to proceed here. Um, and instead, we're going to take the unsuccessful path and not produce a report on this URL. Uh, so that particular instance of the loop would not proceed. And if we do determine that we're going to proceed, the next thing we're going to do is for each one of those URLs, we're going to use the slash next phishing incident response app. And we're going to perform the URL scan sync function. And that's what's going on here. Uh, some specifics around that, the URL scan sync is a blocking call. So when we make this call out to slash next, um, it's going to block until we actually get our result. Uh, so we don't have to poll, we don't have to continue to check over and over for different things. Uh, we're going to run that and we'll get our result back. When we do that, we get a scan identifier that we then pass on back to another instance of that app where we're grabbing the report that was produced. And that report contains all the valuable information that we want to know for the rest of the things in this block. We're going to make a determination based off the information that we received back. Was this actually a malicious URL? Let's talk about the unsuccessful path first. In the instance uh, that it's not malicious, so we did scan it, there was nothing to be concerned with. Uh, what we have by, uh, by default here in this playbook is uh, we're going to go delete that indicator out. It's not something that we're interested in, so we remove that. Um, and then we're going to generate a little holder for the uh, report that we're generating, but it's not going to contain any data. And we're going to be done with that particular run. So we weren't interested in that particular indicator. If that's not the case, though, and we do find that this is malicious, uh, we're going to do a number of things here um, inside this block. One of those is that we're going to report observations on the URL indicator. And if you're not familiar with this uh, functionality, observations are a way of accumulating how many times a particular indicator has been seen with your environment uh, using the Threat Connect platform. So it's going to report these observations and give you the opportunity to know uh, just how many times this has actually appeared within your environment. Beyond that, what we're doing here, all of these various blocks, is we're actually formatting the report that we're going to produce for this given URL. Um, so we're taking that forensic information that we received from Slash Next, uh, the URL heading, the verdict data, the threat name, the threat type, the threat status, uh, first seen and last seen, and also the screenshot. Um, and we're putting that all together um, into the HTML report blocks that will eventually become our main report that we're going to store in the system. Uh, once we leave that iterator, what we're left with, uh, the output of the iterator, uh, is an array that contains all of the HTML data for the report. It doesn't actually contain the indicators itself, it's the HTML blocks. So we use our runtime stamp to go back and locate each one of those URLs that we stored as an indicator in the platform. And this is just a really easy way for us to find those and determine if we actually have something that we need to care about. So we recall those, and we're going to determine if they're actually is a number of those indicators to look at. If in fact it's zero, so we've scanned all of those, there, there really wasn't anything interesting out of this email, uh, we are still going to send an email back to uh, our original user and say, hey, thanks for sending that, uh, but there wasn't anything malicious. And so we, we end out of the process here by sending that response. If in fact we had at least one malicious URL, uh, we are going to hop into this final logic here where we're going to finish assembling uh, the report. So we do some housekeeping around that report and all the information that we received out of those blocks. Here we're storing that report in the Threat Connect platform um, as a report object. 
And uh, while we create this, we are associating it with each one of those URL indicators that was created. The next step in this process, a little bit of housekeeping around this, and we're creating the email documents. So the original email is also stored in the platform, um, and then it is associated with that report object that we've created. We're gonna delete our temporary run tag that we used to find those indicators. We don't want those cluttering up our system and they're not useful anymore. And we're gonna notify Threat Connect users that there's something uh, that needs to be looked at. So this is an in-platform notification if you're not familiar with those, um, but this actually goes to the folks who have access to Threat Connect. Um, and depending on your user configuration, this can show up a number of different ways. Um, we'll see it show up in the bell icon, but it also shows up in summary emails as well. And then finally, we're gonna generate a user response. And uh, this time, because we actually found something malicious, we're gonna say, hey, thanks for sending that. We did find something malicious. Um, and that way they do feel engaged in the process. It's not just a black hole where they're sending that. Obviously that information is optional. Um, as to what you actually want to do there, totally up to you as to whether or not you would wanna make use of those. I'm gonna go ahead and activate this and off on another screen. I'm going to go ahead and trigger a test message. While we've got that one working in the background, uh, we will see a fresh execution of this playbook. I'll just point out really quick, uh, this is what our playbooks look like when they are activated. And so we have the ability to go through and look at each one of the steps that we followed. This playbook that we have active uh, is in debug mode um, when you're creating a playbook or trying it out for the first time. So something very useful to do. And that affords us the ability to see inputs and outputs that are passed along um, as this playbook is executed. Uh, we also get detailed logging uh, made available so we have access to app logs as well. We should have that instance of our new message and we do. This is the fresh run uh, that we just instantiated for this. Um, so we're going to take a look at the very last step in this, primarily interested in what user response was sent. I refresh that here. Thanks for sending your message. So Fred Johnson was kind enough to submit something here in our test. Uh, malicious links were found in this message. Um, so we know that we do actually have something interesting to take a look at here. If I go up to my bell icon, I've now received a notification and I can go take a look at this report. A couple of things that I'll point out about this report. Uh, we have here uh, the emails associated with this. So this is stored in platform. I have the text of the original email. Uh, made available. And then here's each one of those URL indicators that we stored. Uh, we have those available as well. Um, and those are associated with this report. I have the ability to view that report. I'm going to pop that up on the screen. And so it's a very simple report, but this is what we make available in the, the default report that we've assembled here. Uh, we contain all of the forensic data that we were discussing, um, along with the screenshot that's stored. So this is uh, a snapshot of the point in time and we're able to see uh, each one of those URLs and what was going on with those. So lots of uh, good information that we have uh, made available through this report. Hopping back over and kind of uh, in conclusion with regards to this playbook, I think it's really important that we just kind of um, hammer on the fact that what we've done with this particular playbook is we've spared someone's time in having to review these messages. Uh, we're only taking action now if we have something malicious to take a look at. And we are leveraging uh, that intelligence that SlashNext is providing us through the phishing incident response app. And that's really taking a lot of the burden of the investigation for us by providing that binary burden. Um, another thing that's important to point out here is with other integrations, we could extend the functionality of this playbook. And that's certainly uh, something that we envision. Um, specifically, I would envision that taking place somewhere here around the notified TC users. That's really up to you when you're messing around with this playbook. But an example of something you might do to extend this uh, would be to block malicious URLs in a secure web gateway, for example. Those areas of extension do become very specific to your environment, but there is quite a bit of flexibility within the ThreatConnect platform to do that. Stepping away from that playbook, kind of in wrap up here, just general information around the ThreatConnect playbooks. As you saw, this was a codeless drag and drop automation, uh, started with the triggers, Kind of went through that with you, but I uh, didn't actually have to write any code to put this together. Um, with our Playbooks capability in the Threat Connect platform, um, you are able to interact with Threat Connect data and other integrations that we make available. 
Um, you can create complex workflows very easily. Um, as you saw, that uh, basically shows up as a diagram. Um, and you can definitely make use of our existing apps uh, to make REST calls and manipulate data. So we have plenty of those to offer. If you are looking for something a, a bit more complex, um, you can also write your own apps using Python 3. Let's say you want to take advantage of a Python library that already exists, or you want to do something a little bit more special. Um, you can write your own app if you're uh, a little bit more inclined to do that. Um, what we're going to do with this playbook that you've just seen is we are going to make this available. Um, after this call, we'll have this available on GitHub. So you can download this. And just like with this playbook, uh, we have other existing templates available. Um, we make some of those available in platform. And we also make some of those available through GitHub. Um, so you'll be able to take a look at those, but strongly encourage you as you uh, take a look at playbooks that you use those as a starting point. And uh, if you do come up with something useful, just like we feel like we've done with this playbook, definitely export and share your playbook with others and uh, try to spread the wealth around. Uh, so that, that kind of concludes what I wanted to talk about with this playbook. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Jan. And Jan, I think you might be on mute. Well, um, looks like we might be having an issue with Jan uh, being able to, to get back here. Um, here we go. Jan, are you back? Hear me yet? Yep, yep, we got gotcha. you. Hey, the other host had me muted. Hey, yeah, quick a bit of housekeeping also for those of you who have joined uh, us live here. Um, uh, you know, John and I can also take questions. So uh, if you look at your, your Zoom uh, info screen there, you might see a Q&A folder there at the bottom. So we uh, encourage you at any time here to go ahead and click on that and enter a question and we'll field what we can here uh, live. Um, but yeah, just in, in wrapping up, I mean, it, it, we kind of mentioned the beginning that, you know, automating uh, abuse inbox management, you know, is, is truly a real time saver. I mean, if you imagine if you had a hundred of these a day and it's taking five minutes each, uh, you know, quickly adds up and it's kind of a burnout thing, actually. <laughs> so it's something that is, is very helpful to automate, you know, save a lot of time and, and money in terms of staffing and, and everything so you can focus on other work. Um, as John was just showed here, actually, uh, automating, you know, creating uh, the playbook and or just leveraging a, a template, a ready-made playbook that's available on GitHub can save a whole lot of uh, time and makes it easy. You just got to tailor it for your use case and, and the intel that you want to use. And when you're using, you know, Slash Next uh, for your URL analysis, you know, getting that extra forensics data, and we've heard from a, a lot of customers that, that that's just really important. I mean, it's one thing to just go, okay, here's a, a URL, we think it's bad, and uh, and uh, you know, here's an IP address and, and things like this, maybe some geo information, but actually getting all those artifacts uh, can help with additional reporting, analysis, to see if that's part of a pattern uh, and all that. So um, one thing I'll mention here, so it, it, just like the uh, playbook itself that John uh, showed today will be up on GitHub. Uh, John, is that gonna be up uh, said later today? Uh, It'll be up just uh, you know shortly after the call here you know today the you know, playbook on GitHub and then the the slash next you know we offer you know free trials um, of our URL analysis uh, you know system so um, if you follow that link there hit it you can go ahead and request a trial and we can contact you and and get you set up with an API key so you can uh, can you can access that yeah and and Jan I apologize uh, I was also having the same mute issue. Um, but uh, yes, I will make this playbook that I've shown um, available on GitHub very shortly after this call. It's not up there yet. If you go there, you're going to find a readme right now, but I will make this available. Great. And I see at least just one question came in here. Um, uh, do the email URLs get batched or are they entered into the playbook as they arrive in the inbox? You want to handle that one, John? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the way that this playbook that we've shown you is structured, um, it is triggered as soon as an email is in there. It's not done in a batch fashion. Um, so we are going to handle those each one um, and run those through. Um, we don't really have this one set up to be in a batch functionality, although you could use our playbook functionality to extend it to do that if you so desired. Yeah, that's actually, um, I mean, that's actually a really good way to set it up to have it done, you know, a as it hits the system and immediately, you know, hit the trigger and so forth. Because you know, the phishing email that, you know, that has made it through all your other email, 
you know, security protections and now the users reporting it, a lot of the phishing attacks out there, particularly those that use URLs, I mean, the, the phishing sites may only be alive for a couple hours or, um, and that sort of thing. So if you waited to batch it, do it once a day or something like that, you're gonna miss quite a few um, of them. So you know, kind of time is of the essence when it comes to checking for, you know, the, uh, whether a phishing attack or suspicious attack is, is truly malicious. Yeah. Let's see. And I see, are there any other questions? I don't see any others coming in just now on the, uh, the Q&A. Do you guys see any others? I don't see okay. any other ones. All right. Well, hey, we said it would be a half hour and we, we delivered. We're even a couple minutes ahead. So <laughs> that's great. Wait, well, hey, appreciate uh, everyone's you know, time joining this, uh, this the, the live webinar uh, here today. And for those of you who see this on demand, again, appreciate your interest. Um, you know, both, both us uh, here at Slash Next uh, and, and also the team over at the Threat Connect will be glad to help you um, answer any questions about using either of our systems uh, together in conjunction to help simplify uh, security operations. So, thank you very much for today and uh, thanks, John. Thank you.